a replenishment when it comes to pentacle energy. And you're terrified that you're not going to get it. You're scared that you're going to stay in this juggling space and this, and these ships are never going to come in. And that Hello, Capricorn. My name is Kristen Simone Hansen, and welcome to Secret Secret. Okay, so Capricorn, this is your February personal reading. Uh, just to let you guys know, I have reduced the readings down to just being one big monthly reading, mainly because I found that uh, doing the love and career readings separately wasn't really, I mean, it just, it felt like as if you guys just wanted it all to be one. And I feel the most comfortable in the personal readings because they are really rooted in divine messages versus love being a little bit separate from the self, career being the extension of the self. So I figured I could just do it all in one and this is your personal reading where we cover the individual divine uh, purpose and also the way that it affects your love and your relationships which also includes family dynamics and then also how it affects your career and what's happening in terms of your finances and your work sector. So welcome to the big condensed video that is going to cover all of those things. So look forward to now month by month just your big personal <laughs> so much beeping going on outside uh, your big personal uh, reading for the month. Uh, let me well let me know what you guys think of this idea of me no longer separating them and putting them in one uh, and if you think this works uh, I like it so uh, but at the same time we are at the beginning of the video so I would say go through the entire thing I will remind you again of this at the end so that it's fresh in your memory and yeah so tell me your thoughts in the comment section yeah, as a reminder, I am Kristen and I am a healer. In this video, you're going to get a full rundown of what it is that you can expect for the month of February in terms of self, love, and career, and all of the things you need to do in order to try to navigate it the best way you can and utilize the energies that are here working in your favor astrologically and then also in alignment with a oracle and tarot card reading that I give to you at the, I guess, the second half. If you would like a personal reading from me after you've gone through this and you realize that you connect with me, you can find that link below. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> become a client. Enter into uh, the deeper side of the Seagull Collective and all of the other people that are also a part of that home space that we have together. Um, I am excited to say we're all going to start to go on Zoom calls and <laughs> connecting with each other in bigger healings. Uh, and we're also getting a personalized membership. So there's a bunch of stuff happening for uh, those of us who are part of the internal uh, healing circle. So yes, if it works for you, <laughs> join the healing circle and you do so by clicking the link below. Uh, and lastly, as you guys know, I am a global citizen, non-politically. And so let me know where you're listening and which part of the world um, yeah, and connect with us deeper. Welcome. Let's get into this. Capricorn, I am so excited because February is a big month for you guys. And I mean, every month is big, right? It's because you guys, uh, it was different when you were in the, the Capricorn Pluto, the months <laughs> where uh, time was really slowed down, you know, to a point of uh, sometimes it could feel like like scar tissue, like you guys were, were being stitched up very slowly. You know, if you guys have ever gotten stitches, you know what I mean by that. Um, but now it's different. Things are moving very, very quickly. So since Pluto has left Capricorn, you have been feeling a weight lift, a big emotional weight lift. And it could have done two things. For some of you, you are in a more lighthearted space where things are working out. And you're, like you've said to me, you're afraid that the ground is going to be ripped underneath you because you're used to the ground being ripped underneath you. And it's been like that for a while. Uh, for others of you, you felt that shift. You feel the weight lift. You see the light. But you're so used to the dark that it's like the light illuminated the dark. 
So, and this is the aftermath of that big Leo moon that I was telling you guys about where it was all your eighth house. So it was cleaning out your closet. Don't mistake that energy for feeling like, oh, this shift happened and it's never going to change and I'm never going to see the daylight and maybe it's too late, maybe I'm too damaged, maybe too much happened. That Leo full moon put you in your eighth house and it still has you in your eighth house, okay? Uh, we're still in the aftermath energy of it. So it, it, it it's still cleaning, okay? And understand that what became illuminated because Leo illuminates, why? Because Leo represents the sun. The sun brings illumination. Sometimes we think of the sun and we think, oh, you know, it's just fun and it's happy and it's, no, <laughs> and it's, with every dark, there is a light. With every yin, there is a yang. Everything has multi-purpose, and the sun illuminates. So because it illuminates, it awakens whatever was, was not seen in the dark. And the in Leo is your eighth house, so it is this constant illumination of what is in the shadow. And that's also what causes your perfectionism, because it's your, you're always aware of what's in that shadow. So what has gone on uh, after that Leo full moon is, yeah, you that trauma is there. The things that you didn't see before, the things that you kind of power through because uh, you didn't have a choice because Capricorn is in Pluto and you have to survive and you have to do all these things. It's like all of those things have been hitting you. Memories of resurfacing, uh, awareness of self. A lot of self-compassion has come in, which is beautiful. And again, that Aquarian shift has you in a space where uh, it being in your second house, yes, it's about money and we'll get into money, we'll get into finances, but it's your second house about your values, your self-worth, okay? When you think of the second house, think of Taurian energy. Now, this is where we bring things back to the spiritual and remove it from the modern practical. The second house in the modern practical is money and, uh, you know, uh, values in a sense of, I don't know, it could be your politics or your, or your ideologies, but on a spiritual sense, the second house is down to your self-worth, the way in which you value who it is that you are, down to self-care, your ability to plant seeds and grow them. So with, the, and most importantly, self-compassion, because in order to have self-worth, one must harbor self-compassion. So with, uh, Aquarius moving into Pluto, the awareness of yourself and your compassion toward yourself and Aquarian energy, the water bearer, that water is coming in to heal you. You're healing all of these things around the second house in the sun and Pluto and all of the other placements that are going to be happening all throughout Aquarius. So it's bringing about great healing for you because the karma is in your alignment. And so through that healing, you are awakening to so much self-compassion because you want to increase your self-worth. You're aware of your worth, but things are dark. And that Leo moon came in and it illuminated the things that are dark and the things that you went through. And it, it that pressure is there, that fear is there. And for some of you, anger as well because of uh, Leo. So Leo is the kind of sign where, uh, or energy, Leo is the kind of energy where if it's disrespected, it responds by getting pissed off. <laughs> if it is hurt, it can respond by being angry because it's fire energy along with that animal, that lion energy. So it's, uh, when I think of uh, the Leo energy, it's kind of like the combination of what we traditionally think of as Leo, but then also Taurian at the same time. So the way it can respond to ruptured emotions is to fight is to uh, uh, give it aggression. So you guys have been aware of this. You're, you're feeling angry, righteous anger for yourself because of self-compassion, the increase of self-worth. You want to fight for yourself. That's what second house energy is. That's what Taurian energy is. Taurian uh, energy rules the second house. I know my self-worth so much. I am aware of my self-value so much. I'm going to fight for it. I, if the bull has to get angry, the bull is going to get angry in order to uh, protect and defend what it knows its worth and its, again, value system. All in this area, down to like uh, the parts of me that are illuminated right now go into the solar plex. And for many of you guys' personal healings that I've done, it's I get so much solar plex illumination. 
And for so many of you, most of my readings have been, uh, if not all of you have strong Capricorn placements, so most of you guys have been Capricorn suns, if not Capricorn risings. And so a lot of you have taken hits in terms of your solar plexus, your confidence. And so here we are now, and it's the same thing, right? Because self-worth, if your self-worth has been compromised, which makes sense because Capricorn Pluto is changing the way you view your identity. It is a solar plex renewal. It is an ego renewal, uh, soul renewal. Renewal. So it makes sense that your wounding is taking place in that area. And right now, as I'm talking about this, solar plex illumination, self-worth, self-value, your value systems, and how they then uh, create the life that it is that you want. So that's what's going on in terms of your emotions. Uh, great healing is not always comfortable. And when the shadow is illuminated, it was illuminated in divine alignment so that you can walk into Aquarius illumination which is the stellium of Aquarius that we're about to walk into but right now Aquarius is in Pluto and it's also in the Sun you can walk into this great healing energy of the water bearer ready to actually move toward a new beginning because what was in the dark came into illumination so that you can sift through it go through it and actually heal it okay so be gentle with yourself <laughs> uh, it's not an easy time now as I was saying, for this one half of you who are feeling more lighthearted and you're afraid the ground's going to be ripped from underneath you, and the other half of you are the ones that are going through this uh, shadow in that sense, uh, <laughs> continue to uh, move forward. So understand that A, the ground will not be ripped underneath you. However, your foundation is not necessarily solid yet. By the end of February, either, you're, either you will be walking on solid ground or the solid ground will be able to uh, show itself in a way where the plan is uh, seamless, basically. Yeah, where the plan is seamless. So and that is because there's a lot of healing happening in February. So let's get into this. As of right now, um, with all the emotional stuff that's going on, bear with yourself, be kind to yourself. Healing comes in many different um, ups and downs. It's never comfortable. Whatever it is that's bothering you or angry, anger in you, it's coming from self-compassion to increase self-worth, to make room for self-worth. You cannot have self-worth if you do not have compassion toward yourself. Okay, so let's get into the next part now, February. And yes, bringing it back to finances and how finances are going to play a big role throughout February. Uh, because your value system is increasing, like we said, your worth is increasing, and therefore you're giving all of your energy toward the way in which that can show up on the outside. You guys have gone through a lot of wounds when it comes to your finances, starting with the way in which... Uh, Capricorn and uh, Aquarius was in Saturn a few years back. Aquarius Saturn really shook you and uh, ruptured you when it came to your finances. And so many of you guys have gone through that. For the past 15 years in general, you've gone through a lot of financial ups and downs, mainly due to how you made your money. Um, and really Pluto is trying to break you down so you became the truest self and learned how to focus more on abundance more than money itself. Focus on uh, the illumination of energy versus just... Um, crunching numbers. Uh, I think it's important, and this is again nothing against other readers, but a lot of people tend to get this wrong about the journey that you guys have been on and it could be simply because they are juggling many other signs and like I always say I created Seagoat Secrets because people really misunderstand you guys' energy. Uh, this is something that you know you've gone through. Uh, I've definitely uh, seen this theme of, oh, you know, uh, Pluto is an Aquarius, so Capricorn, you have to actually focus on something other than making money. You guys know that your focus has not been on that. You guys know that the hyper-focus you've had on money, especially for the past year or so, has been, been because you've been ruptured financially. So again, be careful who you listen to. Don't let anybody tell you something inaccurate about yourself. The beauty of February is, yes, you are being lifted from that having to be your focus because it's removing the trauma tied to it. And that trauma that you have of things, again, the ground being ripped from underneath you, the trauma of somebody else exercising power over you, or the trauma of just not being able to do what you love and being able to generate what it is that you need. Uh, feeling like, um, actually, I think I'm going to title this video this, uh, Peace Equals Progress. Uh, 
And that is the theme all throughout Aquarius Pluto for you in general. Uh, so just think about how beautiful that is for a 20 year transit, peace equaling progress for you. And this is the beginning of you being aware of that. February brings in this, again, water bearer energy. You guys have been through a lot. You are the sea goat, but it's like the water that is being poured onto you. It's this healing, holy water in order to restore you. And it's bringing this rush of peace over you, restoring your confidence, your self-esteem, your self-worth, and most importantly, directly, your pentacles, your currency. It's in, it's restoring your energy. So you're not going to feel overworked in order to, or you're going to see solutions where you don't have to overwork yourself in order to get what it is that you desire. The ground is not going to be under uh, ripped from underneath you and you're going to see that. You're going to see major restoration in the things that have been uh, breaking your back, really. And why is that? Because the challenges that you've been experiencing when it comes to your currency and your finances have been because you've needed to restore yourself. You've needed to, not restore, I'm sorry, reinvent yourself. So Pluto is trying to make it so that you had to change as much as humanly possible <laughs> before the transit left you. So yeah, a lot of upheavals, a lot of ups and downs. And if you were ever stubborn or not on your right path, Pluto would literally rip the ground from underneath you so you had no choice but to align in the right way. Uh, put you in spaces, for some of you it could have put you in spaces of scarcity so that you learned how to better value your finances. Could have put you in um, relationships where people took things from you, where your your codependency on the wrong types of people or just your dependency on the wrong kinds of people made everything uh, shake you. So these things have happened not to torture you, but to, again, change you so that you would uh, be on the right path in order to build this wealth that's now going to come to you. So it's beautiful energy. Again, water uh, being poured onto you. Okay, first week. <laughs> so we've got uh, a beautiful... Uh, kind of dance going on with Saturn and Jupiter. And this is making it so that there is a big increase in the way people see you. So, and this is along with other placements that are happening. So the first week of the month is still continuing this, well, the first two weeks of the month is still continuing this feeling of there's something about you that's very charming, that's very alluring, um, bringing on this this feeling of people see like this star quality in you this is going to be going on for the next 20 years but this is the beginning of this this starlight in you this charm uh because capricorn has been in venus for some time you've also been doing a lot of self-care uh prioritizing the way you look or your body even for some of you your way uh of realigning yourself was just doing things that were natural so if you, uh, if you yourself have a Capricorn Venus, you were doing things that were more, uh, I guess, maintenance focused, right? Like uh, doing certain things with your hair and, and your natural body, your skin. Capricorn is all about natural beauty, but aligning with natural beauty in order to create... Usually you guys go for like a stunning kind of beauty, something outer worldly or under, I usually say underworldly with you guys when it comes to beauty. Outer worldly tends to be, uh, again, more Pisces, more Aquarian in a sense of kind of doing things that are a little bit unnatural. You guys tend to like to um, mix that, that earth and water kind of energy together to create more of a mysterious uh, allure to you. And... Um, Usually you like to kind of really focus on what is natural in that sense. So you guys have been doing that. A lot of uh, little tweaks in terms of uh, emphasizing maybe your cheekbones or your eyes or different things like that. Uh, if you have been struggling emotionally, the Capricorn Venus has made it so that you maybe let go of yourself in one department, but then uh, kind of illuminated yourself in another. So that's another thing as well. Uh, so with this energy, along with the Saturn and Jupiter placement, for the next two, for the first two weeks of February, social media increase, uh, love increase in terms of people wanting to love you. They don't know why, but there's something about you that's just like shining, right? This beautiful illumination. There's something about you that is just like, oof, you know, <laughs> it's it's nice. It's it's it, you're the beauty standard right now, you know. Uh, and again, this is the beginning of a a new way because you guys during the uh, the aqua pluto transit are 
beauty standard uh, goals, right? The way in which your beauty is, is considered goals, uh, trend setting, etc. So uh, it's important to kind of understand that and to uh, begin to work with yourself in the way you naturally show up. Um, uh, the good thing is as well, you have the Capricorn Venus has put this emphasis on you and who it is that you want to be. It'll move out of Venus on the 15th of February. So up until that point, especially around the Valentine's Day time period, you can find yourself in a space where people are interested in dating you. They are interested in connecting with you and aligning with you. Uh, but most importantly, you're interested in yourself. And this extreme self-interest is something that was going on out throughout the Capricorn uh, transit and is still carrying on throughout the Venus and Capricorn. Once Venus entered Capricorn, you got this big cup of self-love that kind of showed itself to you and you've been drinking out of it. And it's along with this increase of self-worth with uh, the Pluto transit and the Sun transit. So as all are working together, you are prioritizing yourself. You know the value of yourself and you don't rise anymore. Obviously, like I said, for some of you, it's bringing up the past of the times in which you were trespassed against or your, your value was not acknowledged. Continue to work through that anger and sift through it because it's not to say that it's at its end. <laughs> uh, you're going to kind of stay in that energy all throughout the end, all throughout February until the end, mainly because the universe is going to prove to you that you did not do it all for nothing. And you're going to have to learn to kind of open yourself up to all the changes and all the healing that's going to be happening during February. So where you lost, you will find yourself being restored. And that is no exaggeration. February is extremely healing. Uh, February 15th and onward to the end of March, we've got beautiful serendipity in your finances. So uh, your look in itself being able to be a... Uh, uh, a part of how it is that you increase your money. So it could be the way in which you've been beautifying yourself with Capricorn and Venus, if you can land uh, for some of you that are models or going on job interviews or something about you where you don't have to try as hard, okay? You just being you is the reason why people are wanting to give to you. They wanna give you the position. This is all throughout the second week of February. Uh, offers in terms of money, partnerships, uh, it's, uh, what's the other word? Money, partnerships, deals, uh, job opportunities. So things are aligning with you when Aqua goes into uh, Venus on the 15th after moving out of your sign because it's now, okay, you've been spending all this time refining yourself, beautifying yourself, being clear on who it is that you want to be in the world. And then the shift happen where it's, shift happens where it goes, okay, well, how does that now affect your money, how does it affect your, your finances? This is beautiful energy because Venus in general is an indication of, yes, our beauty, but also our money. How uh, the Empress energy, which is how our finances become an extension of the way in which we care for and treat ourselves. This is big energy that you guys are gonna see playing out throughout that second week because it's going to see in which, or it's gonna show you the way in which you appreciate yourself and value yourself giving you big returns on your investments. We've got uh, this big shift in the way you're looking at your identity. And this is going to be, this is because of the Capricorn Mars transit that has gone on in January. Again, all that is happening with you is I am great. I am this. I am that. You have an I am awareness and it's going to be lasting you for the next two years. And it's going to be the driving force behind all of this beautiful, uh, all of these new beautiful beginnings that you're going to be creating for yourself and feeling like finally luck is on your side because Aquarius is going to pour water onto you, healing water onto you. Uh, and this is the beginning of that transition. February in general is the beginning of a new life for you. If, you've, if you haven't had that theme that's going on, that's pretty much what it is that I'm saying. So big lucky breaks uh, during that second week. You're starting to feel this big... Uh, uh, strong sense of self, the awareness of things that are opposing you as well. Uh, because of the way in which you're valuing yourself with the Aquarius stellium, you don't want to compromise anymore, as I keep saying. So uh, with it being your second house, second house is also something that deals with value systems, but also what we consume. Uh, who it is that we let around us and the energy that we give to things. So you could be going through a health shift, uh, 
having uh, Aquarius in your second house can also happen or create like kind of strange health uh, issues that you can find yourself healing throughout this month. Uh, anything that was kind of opposing you or going against you, big healing along those lines, and then being able to come up with a solution so that you do not run into those problems in the future. So big change in diet, how you eat. Um, you could be going from being a, a, a carnivore to being a vegan or, or a vegan to being a pescatarian and actually making that shift for a long time moving forward. A lot of big changes are happening with you. So who it is that you really want to be, the thing that aligns with your self-worth and your self-value the most is the thing that you're going to be focused on. That Aquarius stellium is coming in where it says the more you love yourself, the more it's going to show up in your financial wealth, financial health. So you're increasing your wealth altogether. Uh, February is about wealth increase, but it's not just wealth in terms of money, but it's wealth in terms of identity, wealth in terms of self-love, wealth in terms of your um, your health, and also your friendships and your connections with Aquar Aquarius is the 11th house. So you're going to become illuminated with how people see you, how they value you, how they are loving you, and how it is that other people can increase uh, your finances, your path, your your uh, plans for yourself. Again, social media is a big thing that can see itself working in your favor throughout February. For those of you who are entrepreneurs, all of a sudden the right people just are falling into your lap. You're going to start to feel very, very abundant. Big healing happening in your abundance. The biggest opposition I would say throughout this month is, like I said, the residual anger that can find itself underneath the surface for you all month because of where you've been. So uh, kind of trying to get control of your negative thinking because time is of the essence. And so uh, if you're in a strain, if you're in a difficulty, if you've just been going through pain for so long, uh, it can be hard to look at the light. By the end of the month, you're going to be feeling very different, but throughout it, you're going to be carrying, some of you can be carrying that anger underneath. I'm neither here nor there with telling you to get rid of it or not. I think many of it, many of how, much of how you feel is valid. Um, but you have to be open to change. You have to be open to uh, shifts happening in a positive light. Uh, and so another part of that as well is when something good happens, you can be aware of when something bad happened in the past. Uh, like the kind of thing where finally I'm getting the job that I deserve. I remember when this old position treated me this way or when this person treated me that way or when these things happened. Because, yeah, because that's what happens when it comes to healing. So healing in general is not always pretty. And you're going through a lot of healing in February. Financial healing being number one, uh, and it's it can look confusing. It can look like a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Healing is not always traditional as well. So for some of you, the financial healing could be releasing debts, but those debts don't necessarily mean that being they're being released in a conventional way. It could mean releasing a loan or getting a loan. There are so many different ways in which uh, healing can show itself, um, but you just have to be open to it. Uh, one thing you've had to learn over the past few months is that you don't know everything and you don't have all the answers and you've been uh, broken down so that you could learn how to value the art of happiness. We talked about this in the six month reading to be aware of uh, the next, I guess the six, the first half of this year is about understanding the 10 of cups energy, take the baby with the bathwater, understand what true happiness is and don't fight for what you think happiness looks like or what you think healing looks like, because it's not what it is that you, uh, always envisioned. It looks met like many different ways and it can uh, happen in uh, many different ways. And that's a big thing to keep in with February. Unconventional ways in which you can become happy. Unconventional ways in which you can be become financially free. Unconventional ways in which you can become successful. So week three, speaking of that, comes in with a huge financial boom. So this is a time where you can find yourself... Uh, Again, getting phone calls that you never thought would happen. So it could be uh, you all of a sudden get put in a position of power, authority, week three of February. Power, authority, someone of power and authority can give you a position. 
a big increase in your finances by uh, your business, your business taking a big boom, a big increase, but your authority changes, your shift changes, your role changes. And through this, by uh, all throughout the end of February, especially the last week of February, you're going to realize that the healing that is taking place in terms of your finances is the kind of thing that is going to shift your life for good. So that is the kind of peace that you're going to be able to... Um, I guess, move through, right? So whatever it is that's being offered to you is the kind of thing that is going to shift the perspective. So uh, again, down literally down to a job position that you realize, oh my goodness, this job is going to make it so that now moving forward, I can finally buy the home that it is that I've been wanting. I can finally live where it is that I wanted to live. I, I can finally move where it is that I wanted to move. Through this one shift that happens in terms of this financial increase throughout the third week, by the fourth week, you're realizing this is how I heal all these other things. Through this offer is how things come into completion. It's not what you expected. It's not what you thought maybe a couple of months ago or uh, ideas that you had for yourself, but you quickly begin to realize that this is the solution to what you deemed as problems. And it's a big shift. Uh, you're feeling on fire. You're feeling very powerful during that time. Um, you can also be feeling kind of, uh, again, you're authoritative. So I would say to tamper your energy a little bit, especially because like I said, that residual rage or frustration that's going on underneath the surface because of the things that have taken place in the past. You're looking at things right now and you can kind of want to bite some people's heads off. In simple terms, it could be as simple as, hi, hater, look at me, I'm winning now. You know, it's different things like that. Um, so I would say to try to control that. We've got week four. Uh, I'm sorry, Collective, but the video cut off. So down to week four. Uh, to put more emphasis again on week four, uh, from le week three leading into week four, by the time the end of February comes around, you're going to uh, be in a much better state emotionally, and that is going to prepare you for the big changes that are big changes that are happening in March. But as week four comes around, again, you're on fire, momentum is happening, you've seen the returns on your investments, and that has given you a big boost in energy. Uh, Mercury moves into Pisces on February 23rd, uh, which is your third house. And your third house is representation of, you know, communication, travel, language, siblings, etc. Mm -hmm. So the, the big thing and the good thing here is there is big healing in that area, uh, especially around a sibling relationship, mainly because whatever sibling relationship that you've had, if it has been strained, that became something of emphasis to you when Pisces moved into Saturn, which happened, uh, which has gone on since 2022. It happened at the end of, uh, I think it happened at the end of 2022. Um, so there's a possibility to have big healing in that department. If it's not with the sibling, then it's healing in terms of travel, moving, communication, uh, neighbors, so something along those lines, but you're able to, at the end of February, wrap it up in this very sweet way where you're seeing, uh, now that you're in a more stable place, now that you're in a more calm and uh, happier place, because a lot of healing has taken place in the spaces that have made you feel uh, scared or unstable, you're able to do more for your relationships. That's how it shows up in a practical sense. You're in a better state of mind, so it feels like you're able to handle these situations better than you would have before. That's how it's going to feel to you. Um, that's also how it's going to feel to others. Uh, whether that's actually the case or not, whether you are guilty or innocent in this dynamic, it's there's a possibility for you to be able to experience it better. Also, it can work in a sense of other people want to heal the dynamic with you. So if they know they've been wrong or if they know they've wronged you in some kind of way, they want to, again, pour water into you. There's something about you that it's igniting the compassion in others, uh, them being able to communicate how it is that they feel. Pisces is in Mercury, so it awakens compassion. It automatically makes people in a space where they want to kind of do that energy. Moving it from uh, February into March, there's a little bit of a shift, kind of getting closer to spring. Different things that are going on um, 
the Aquarian energy as well is making people want to heal things, putting a shift in things. So that is something that is going to kind of show itself, which is a great way to wrap up the month. Uh, so you're wrapping up the month feeling very financially strong. You're wrapping up the month seeing a lot of healing take place in places that you didn't know you'd be able to heal. Throughout January, it's felt like darkest before dawn, and then the dawn happens here in February. So just be prepared for a lot of healing when it comes to self-respect, self-worth, self-love, value systems, and that then reflecting itself in terms of money, finances, career, and then rooting itself in how people treat you, how they show up to you in relationships, and healing uh, relationship karma tied to not being valued or appreciated for who it is that you are. So now that I'm doing this video differently than I've done the other ones in the past, um, I wanted to wrap it up with the three parts that you guys are used to me doing. Uh, be aware of this. It's so you guys can let me know in the comments if you like how this big video <laughs> is going um, or you prefer me to do it the way I used to. But so I'm calling it takeaways. So let's do monthly takeaways for personal self. Okay. The takeaway for the self is be open to healing, be open to change, be open to the innovative ways in which there can be solutions to problems that you can't see an end to. Be aware of the ways in which your self-worth is going to reflect what it is that you want in your life. If you don't have any answers, go within the self and say, I deserve. When you put out, I deserve, instead of focusing on the literal, tangible, well, I don't see it and I don't know how it's going to happen. I, I, can't, I can't generate it. That is because you're used to... Uh, hyper independence it could also be that you're used to again the ground being ripped from underneath you which can create hyper independent response so just put out i deserve i desire okay i deserve i desire and allow whatever it is that shows itself to give you that return on your investment through could be unconventional means or it could be unconventional in a sense of just doing it in a way that you haven't done it before also when it comes to personal this leads into relationships allowing people to help you, allowing people to show up for you, being open to keep Aquarius, which is an Aquarius for you guys, like I said, is your second house, but Aquarius energy is all about network, network equaling net worth. I've been saying this statement to you guys for a while because this is how you increase your net worth during the Aquarian age, much less the Aquarian Pluto. Network equal, equaling net worth. This is something that naturally in your Capricornian energy you understand because of where Aquarius is in your chart, but it's something that you struggle with because it's there for a reason. <laughs> it's opposition for a reason so you can grow through it. And this is asking you to learn how to lean on net worth in order, sorry, lean on network in order to increase your net worth. And net worth for the personal is about healing. It's about uh, net worth for the personal is about self-worth. It's about an increase in the abundance of self-love. So allowing other people to pour into you will bring about great uh, movement in terms of your personal development this month. Now, relationship takeaway. This is not necessarily, I mean, we're in February. <laughs> we're in Valentine's Day, which is a worldly holiday. Uh, what you will see in terms of your love is that it's all about the way in which you seeing yourself with an extreme sense of self-worth is shifting the way in which you see yourself in love. So for many of you, especially if you are single, you're going to see what it is that you once desired no longer being what it is that you desire. You're going to see yourself much more uh, open to things that feel good and more critical to things that feel a little bit too trying. Well, you found yourself in the past willing to compromise a little too much so that you could achieve what it is that you wanted. You would think through hard work you can achieve uh, this goal when it comes to love, but that's not how it necessarily works in a way that uh, is in your favor. And because you guys were the Pluto, were the Pluto placement, you were Capricorns, you attracted a lot of narcissism, a lot of abuse, why? Because you attracted users. Whoever is the star of the Pluto uh, age is the star for the moment. You know, they are the, all the focus is on them. Uh, they can they become scapegoats for society. They become people that people want to use, see value in uh, to navigate the age. 
we're seeing that happen with Aquarius is that shift happen with Aquarius is for some of you you could have literally uh, left relationships and if you had a narcissistic ex that narcissistic ex could have literally ended up in a relationship with Aquarius or you guys could have been with Aquariuses that might be narcissistic something like that um, but in in terms of this dynamic and a part of the reason why is because what that is 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 user energy right uh, and that happens because it's it's like an automatic shift where the person who is a natural user wants to navigate what is going on in the moment, what is popular in the moment, what is, uh, they're not necessarily always aware of uh, Pluto placements or anything like that, but they're just aware that they need to use someone in order to get where it is that they want to go in life. And now Aquarius is the star and uh, literally and figuratively, right? <laughs> so uh, they are going to go through the process of you know, being used and like go through different things in order to grow and transform and change and you know all of the above uh, you guys have gone through that so and that theme has carried you for a long time especially just being Capricorns in general it's it's almost automatic for you sometimes to attract users uh, so you are now stepping out of that energy you're stepping out of being uh, the center of other people's attention in terms of how is it that I can get what it is that I want by using this person. You're no longer in that position. You won't allow yourself to be in that position. And as your self-worth continues to increase, you're no longer aligning yourself with energies that see you in that way. And any parts of you that might have been a user or uh, lacked self-confidence or thought in scarcity when it came to love has been removed and it's going to uh, continually be removed all throughout February. So there's a big healing going on in terms of love and relationships. A lot of you are setting extreme boundaries. What it is that you will tolerate and not tolerate is going through a big shift. The answer is no. <laughs> in a lot of ways, the answer is no for a lot of people when it comes to you guys because you're loving yourself. So uh, yes, you're looking very good. You're, you're, you're looking very shiny. You know, you guys are uh, big stars during the Aquarian age. You're very shiny, uh, but that doesn't mean you're letting everybody in. And when I said that Aquarius is the star of the Pluto era, it's it's not necessarily, it's kind of like how you guys were the stars of the Capricorn Pluto. It's not necessarily the star in the same traditional sense. It's more like all the attention is on them. The Most of the attention is being shifted from you in that way, and it's more like you're shining bright, which is good after all of the karma. Uh, you're a person that people are gravitating toward and want uh, for some reason to have you a part of their lives, but it's important to understand um, and I don't have to say that to you guys because as your self-worth increases, as that second house is there in Aquarian energy pouring all of this beautiful water into you, you're saying never again. So if you were used in the past financially, and maybe that could be where what the scarcity that you were running into or the difficulties that you were running into in terms of your finances because you didn't have boundaries, you're not doing that again. You're not attracting partners that want you for the wrong reasons anymore. Or if you're attracting them, you're closing that door on them. Um, anybody that didn't see value in you, that didn't see you as someone of worth, that saw you as someone that they were going to use or whatever it is, all those doors are closing because as your self-worth goes up, your tolerance goes down which is great. Uh, you guys could also be kicking out anybody in your life that again does not serve, uh, that is using you or is not increasing you in some kind of way because you're big on increase. As uh, the Aquarian energy, as I say, is putting pouring water into you and making you feel abundant, you're not going to put yourself in a position where anybody takes away from that zero tolerance for it, which is great. So all of that healing is good. Uh, if you are partnered, these same themes are playing out. So you could either find it where you and your partner are going through a better space with one another. So big financial increases that help you guys get to where it is that you want to go. Great healing conversations, doing right by each other, being better to one another, uh, moving into deeper commitments with one another as the eight year goes on. Uh, tolerating less maybe family that might intersect or interject with you guys' relationships. You guys are setting boundaries with the outside world and putting more love into each other, which is great. Uh, if you do find yourself in a new partnership throughout this February, you are more likely to find a person that, again, is a good decision because of where you are. So if you are dating actively during this time, 
luck is on your side mainly because especially around the end of the month mainly because the great healing that has taken place is in terms of your self-worth so anyone that does not align with something that's going to pour into you is already going to be a little intimidated by you and separate themselves from the dynamic so anybody that can withstand that weight is someone who's worth a little bit of their salt so i would say to keep those boundaries strong keep your self-respect up and align with the right partners so finish off with relationships. Keep in mind that uh, Chiron is doing a beautiful dance with the North Node uh, during the month of February. This is at February 19th, so the end of February on until January 2025 is the last leg of the Chiron energy where Chiron uh, in Aries going on with the Chiron North Node. So for you guys, this is your fourth house and your fourth house in terms of home and family. So since 2019, you've been running into issues in terms of who, who can you really trust? Who is your home? Who is your family? Where do you want to live? Uh, again, the emphasis of the mother wound, which is why I made those two mother wound videos, because the mother wound has been a big conversation with you guys since 2019. The awareness of the relationship with the mother and how it might have damaged you, how it has directed you, and doing the best that you can to try to heal that energy with the Chiron placement with Aries uh, in that energy. So. As the shift is taking place, now it's going on in a space of healing. So the end of February, February 19th and on, you're going to start to see the restoration of the broken parts of you from the mother wound, from this idea of home and family. Finally, you feel like, because your money is right, right? Finally, you feel like you can, you can move to a place that actually feels like home. Finally, you are feeling like, oh, I can... You know, I can finally pay the bills I need in order to feel stable in my home. If you run into financial strains where you were feeling uh, scared and frustrated about uh, your mortgage or your rent or something like that, there's finally a great healing and a, you can breathe now in terms of where your finances are navigating themselves when it comes to home. So you, you're feeling stable in that sense. You can also find yourself healing relationships, like I said. So... Uh, February 19th is this this, Cairo, this Aries placement, this Aries dance. Just a few days later, we've got Mercury going into Pisces. So this brings great space for you to have conversations with your mother that can heal you. Have conversations with siblings that maybe carry the same wound that you do and healing this energy. Finally, they understand you. Finally, they're willing to listen. Uh, being able to heal relationships at home where you can feel better in your spaces. Uh, healing relationships with your neighbors, being able to uh, be in a space where, you know what, finally this this issue has been resolved, I'm feeling more stable, I'm feeling good, uh, in terms of visas as well, and uh, documentation around the home, or again, mortgage signs off, sign offs and different things like that, there's this this great healing energy that says, finally, you can rest. Finally, you're stable. Uh, the things that you need have found you financially or in terms of uh, self-worth or self-value, and you're finally feeling stabilized. So those are great big things happening in terms of uh, healing around this energy at the end of February, which is going to feel very, very good. And in terms of the extension of love, uh, that is more healing in terms of the way your home uh, life is reflective of this energy. So being able to heal if you're in a marriage, being able to heal whatever tension has been taking place in the home, being able to finally heal your own mother wound and have it no longer affect your relationship, being able to finally feel like you're building your new foundation or your own foundation away from what it is that you dealt with in the past or how it is that you were raised, which is wonderful. To wrap up with career, as I was saying, um, biggest thing, like we were talking about money. <laughs> it's the money manifestation. Uh, so the takeaway in terms of career is be open to unconventional ways in which your money can be restored. Be open to unconventional ideas about the kind of position that you can hold. You guys can find yourself, as I said, especially around the third week of February, getting positions or getting offers that you never thought you were going to get. And it could even be things that you didn't even think you wanted. Be open to the idea of being in a new position or being a new person because uh, as you've gone through all of these changes, new things are showing up in a way that is innovative and uh, asking you to change yourself and uh, be a different version of yourself. So 
do that as well. Uh, be open to people helping you, uh, desiring to connect with you. Uh, do not close off when it comes to bosses or superiors aligning with you and being able to say, you know what, this position will work for you and this position won't work for you. Um, the ways in which your career is asking you to change in order for you to make and generate more income, generate more money, you're going to be able to find different streams of income as well. So keep your ideas open, keep your eyes open in terms of all the ways in which you can uh, break through different streams in order to create more of a financial, uh, financially abundant profile. Uh, and align yourself career-wise with as much freedom and fluidity as you can in order to see the greatest return. It's a great month for career. Great month for career and money. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> I know this is very long. Um, like I said, I condensed everything. So you guys tell me what you think. Uh, yeah, we're going to get into the reading now. Okay, so let's begin. Off the bat, the way things came out, we've got the Nine of Swords at the top, and we've got the Seven of Wands next to that, and at the base, we've got the Queen of Swords supporting the two. In your shadow, we've got the Three of Wands along with the Four of Pentacles that came out after that. That ended up showing itself perfectly aligning with the Six of Wands, going on with the King of Pentacles in reverse. What do I see here? And then we've also got some uh, clarification going on when it comes to separation, unconditional love. So number one, when it comes to February, you are in this nightmare. That is the subject. Underneath this nightmare, it showed up next to it, but like I said, the Six of Wands came out after the Nine of Swords. So let's just say next to this nightmare, we've got the Six of Wands. This is the exact opposite of a nightmare, many would say, right? We've, we're, with the Six of Wands, you're looking at victory, you're looking at triumph, you're looking at uh, growth, uh, even expansion in terms of identity, the way in which you're showing up in the world, uh, the way people see you, the way they value you, the way your image is projected. There's a lot of great things going on when the Six of Wands is there. Uh, especially when it comes to some of the themes that we have going on in February, when it comes to uh, surviving the past, being able to see through the other side, um, ending out victorious. And underneath that, we've got the Queen of Swords. So we've got two sword cards on either side of fire. A lot going on in the mental, kind of using your energy or your ability to discern yourself, make sense of things, decision-making, cutting the fat. I've been talking about that a lot when it comes to cutting the fat, which makes sense in terms of, of trauma healing, right? Like erasing the end of the old and bringing it into the new and having to cut away or, or empty or discard anything that stands in the way in order to find yourself in a good place. But here we are with this nine of swords. Great healing is taking place in February, but you are in a nightmare. Stopping the pattern and underneath is unconditional love. <laughs> so we go back to the same place of the pattern in itself being the nine of swords, the pattern in itself being the nightmare. I will not tell you that your nightmare is self-imposed because the nine of swords is very real. Very real. It's a very real nightmare. The worries that you feel are very real. They're very rooted. Uh, there are nine swords standing in front of you and they're leaving you feeling bound. I wouldn't say chained, but scared, worried, frightened. And it's ending that, ending that experience, ending that dynamic. When you want to talk about the spirit owl here, it's all about recalibration to a higher order. You have to learn how to think differently, see things differently. And it's going to be uncomfortable. February is uncomfortable because there is great change going on here. What is already with you with Diving for Light? So we see here that it's about an acknowledgement of what you already have, who it is that you already are, but again, having to illuminate the positive, having to think differently. With what is already with you, recalibration of a higher order, Diving for Light, it's about thinking differently about what it is that you have already experienced, who it is that you are, the resources that are already in front of you. There are things that you are not seeing. There is healing that is right 
underneath this nightmare, right? So there's so much going on, clouding the mind and perspective because you've been in this place for so long, but right underneath it is like this burst of light trying to come out, trying to find itself. There is this victory. There is this victory right there, but you've been here for so long, it's like you can't see it. This is going to be going on all throughout uh, February, which is discernment, clarity. Usually the Queen of Swords for me is somebody that's coming in, you know, kind of a little bit badass. I wouldn't even say it's a it's a positive energy most of the time. The Queen is coming in with a, with a sharp tongue, having to decipher and make sense of things. But in this case, I feel like she's coming in to give you clarity, understanding, having the discernment of knowing who it is that you are all at the end of it. It's it's this clear-minded, non-emotional space. I, I do think it, it is wonderful that we've got the Queen of Swords going on during an Aquarian-based time. Even after we step out of the Sun being in Aquarius, there are prominent placements that are in Aquarius and also the Pluto in Aquarius transit before we step into uh, the Pisces season. It, it goes along with the same energy of what it means to not be wet and not allow the water or the emotions to continue to take you over and put you in this place of anxiety because you're winning here. You have some major victories here and other people see it. They see you as victorious. They want to align with you. They want to follow you. They want to see you. They want to value you. You are at the, you're in the spotlight, but it's, but it's underneath this nightmare. Like it's as if this is, I don't want to say juxtaposition, but it's, it's like this contrast, you know, like, here is a dark, here is a light, here is a dark. I won this thing, but I, I don't know if it's going to stay. I'm so used to things not going right. I'm so used to this nightmare, this anxiety, this darkness. I can't really see the victories in front of me. In your shadow, we've got the three of wands. You're afraid that your ships won't come in. This three of wands shadow card is wonderful because it, it shows you what the shadow of the three of wands feels like. It is like you're you're sitting versus the traditional three of wands, you know, as, as you're sitting on this ledge waiting for your ships to come in. In this shadow sense, it's the opposite. It's the moon is out. It's dark. And you can't see. You can't see anything. You're hoping that those ships come in. It's a much different feeling when you feel like you can see the ship from out yonder. You can see the ship from a distance and you see that it's got all of your, your treasures and your riches and your, and your wife and your children aboard versus when you can't see anything in that dark. That's not even a full moon. It's a crescent moon. You're just having faith in knowing that your ships are arriving. But in this case, as it sits in your shadows, you don't think that that's the case. And you're very worried about it. Four of Pentacles, this feels all very financial, which isn't a surprise for me because February is financial. Uh, mainly because of what's going on with the transits. It's your value systems, your worth. Um, you're feeling scarcity. You're juggling those pentacles. You're juggling and we've got that backed up by the King of Pentacles. So you don't feel like you have any resources. Your resources are tight. Your resources are sitting in scarcity. If it's not uh, financial, then it can just be energetically as well, feeling like you don't have anything to give. You're, you're feeling uh, broken and wounded in a lot of different ways, like your sense of self. It could be mental, psychological strain. Something about you is feeling very ill in terms of your abundance, and you're worried that you're not going to get what it is that you need. You're not going to get returns on your investments, and you're not going to see through this new beginning because you need these pentacles you're you're definitely in deep need of a replenishment when it comes to pentacle energy and you're terrified that you're not going to get it you're scared that you're going to stay in this juggling space and this and these ships are never going to come in and that is what's causing this extreme and you're very 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 scared that's where we're sitting in the nine of swords here it feels like all your resources are, are exhausted and you can't see through. You, you can't see through the other side. It's just like, I see no light at the end of this tunnel. Another crescent moon. There is no light at the end of this tunnel. I can't see anything. There are clouds. Everything is dark. There is a cage here. I, I, I don't know what will be. But right underneath that is the Six of Wands. There is an apparent victory in the Queen of Swords who is in control of her mental health who's in control of her mind, 
in control of what she sees, how she sees it. She's full of clarity and she will not allow her mind to play tricks on her in terms of uh, clarity of foresight and of thought. She is so decisive and discerning in terms of her narrative that nothing can impact the way in which she sees herself. This is someone that is moving with a lot of clarity of mind out of this nightmare completely. And it seems as if though this is rooted in this victory. So as these victories begin to illuminate themselves and shine themselves and you're sitting in this higher position, it, what it ends up creating is it gets you out of this Nine of Swords energy and it, it roots you in the Queen of Swords where slowly throughout the month your mind becomes more clear. Your head becomes more clear. Nothing about this is emotional. There are no cups here. And I don't want you to be mistaken when it comes to these cards. I interpret them differently. But there are no cups. This is not emotional. This is all about uh, everything else. We've got fire here, twice illuminated. We've got pentacles here, which is earth. And we've got air. This is unemotional. It's very literal. These are very real problems. Things that... Uh, affect the life, affect your daily life, your stability, your ability to function. But it's about stopping the pattern. Stopping the pattern of this nightmare, of this negative thinking, of this, this dark place that you've been in. And, and again, it's not the Eight of Swords, so it's not self-imposed. You are valid in how it is that you feel. You are valid in your fear and your worries and your... Your despair is valid. So it's more like something above you. The same thing that places you in this space of the six of wands. Something above you finally shows you, finally stops the pattern within itself. The highest power above your head comes in and brings you, illuminates the light, brings you into a new position. Because underneath stop the pattern, we've got unconditional love. Self-love, oneness, passion, affection, love, love in itself. So as we break up with this deep anxiety and fear, underneath that is love. We've got all of these other crows here admiring this one crow. This is a beautiful victory. Stop the pattern. Bring forth love. Feel victorious. And then your advice is what is already with, with what is already with you, die for light. So although this is not the eight of swords, it feels like the answer to it is kind of looking at it like the eight of swords in that sense, looking at it like like your worries and your fears and your anxieties can be easily removed or are being removed. They are being removed. They are valid. You are not in your own way. You, this is not your fault, but they are being removed. And you're simply being recalibrated. So I'm gonna get into uh, reading this one for you and this one down at the bottom. Okay, so we've got recalibration to a higher order of divine purposes and progress. It is not always a smooth ride, but it is safe to be fearless as you gently hold space for new ways of thinking, living and seeing to emerge. I want you to emphasize thinking, living and seeing. None of those things talk about feeling. So we bring it back to this place of thinking, living, seeing. Air, fire, earth, thinking, living, seeing. All three align with those three things. Very practical, very real results, real experiences, things that affect your daily life. You are encouraged to let go of opinions, again with more air energy. You're encouraged to let go of opinions and belief systems that can not support you in higher frequency states. You shall soon recognize a truth that cuts through confusion and frees you to proceed with love 
peace, and higher understanding. You shall soon recognize a truth that cuts through confusion. We talked about with the Queen of Swords, cutting through the fat, cutting through confusion, cutting through anything that's causing you to stay in this state of anxiety and worry and fear and everything bad is going to happen and I can't get out and I don't know what to do and there's nothing good, there is no light, there. I'm only used to the bad, I'm only used to things being bad. There is a resolution that's going to bring forth truth, clarity, and confusion. Or, sorry, through confusion, separating you through confusion, cuts it through and frees you to pursue, proceed with love, peace, and higher understanding. Breaking the pattern, separating, stopping the pattern in order to align yourself with love. The energy of love is oneness. So much clarity, peace, understanding, movement. When you move through love, you're not feeling unstable. You're not, because these are some really deep fears. We've got the three. Now, luckily, none of these are major arcanas, okay? But still, this is deep for, especially anyone with Capricorn placements. You're afraid your ships aren't coming in. You're living in a space of scarcity. This is a Capricorn card. Both of these are Capricorn cards. You're talking about the pentacles. The only pentacles on this deck here are showing up in the shadow. You're scared that you don't have enough resources and you can't be your truest self, which is that king of pentacles. That is not a happy place to be. That is not an easy place to be. It's got you in the nine of swords. But there is a big shift happening here. A big, big illuminating shift through victory. Through experiencing victory, you will be able to change the way that you're thinking. To break up with the pattern of this darkness, this psychological darkness, and recalibrate yourself to something higher, something greater, something more positive, something where you're feeling more victorious, something where people are seeing you as more victorious. You're being put more on a pedestal, more in alignment with yourself. Okay, so we're going to go down here to the Kini. Seek and you shall find. Find the teachers and teachings which feel pure to your heart. But remember, it is the inner truth. And again, more with truth. Truth, clarity, a lot of air um, themes. Uh, but remember, it is your inner truth of you that will ultimately set you free. Do not give your power away. But trust in a greater guiding wisdom at work in all aspects of your life. Yeah, there we have again with giving it to the divine. This entire month feels like it's above you. Because that Nine of Swords is not saying that your obstacles are in your own head. No, your obstacles are very real. There are things that are liter literally in front of you. These are not your emotions. This is not just anxiety for anxiety's sake. The thing that solves this is actual, literal victory. Ask for help from enlightened spiritual beings in any matter of concern, and help shall be granted. Believe all problems can be solved, resolved, and a more graceful life experience is opening up for you now. Yeah. Recalibration. Psychological and mental recalibration. Believing that things can be solved. Recalibrating the mind out of this space of anxiety and into a space of victory. Because the Queen of Swords is clear on the fact that you know, I don't think the Queen of Swords gets enough credit for her ability to cut through the fat, where her confidence is rooted in, you know, people always say, you know, not being able to, uh, you know, seeing through BS in that sense. But the Queen of Swords has is a queen in her own right. She's still a queen sitting on that throne. In that throne, she knows that she has deserved it. She knows that she's earned it. She knows that it belongs to her. But the difference is she's earned it in a way that is obviously different than, let's say, the king, um, or excuse me, the queen of pentacles. Where the queen of pentacles throne is built on a body of pentacles, of nurturing, of nourishment, of seeds that she's planted. She's earned that throne through uh, the ways in which she's nurtured, nurtured the lands, nurtured uh, the plants, food has grown, abundance is all around her. The queen of swords, not so much. The Queen of Swords is, is sitting in a land that is uh, subjectively a little bit more barren. Her throne 
uh, the Queen of Wands is before her. The Queen of Wands' throne was earned through uh, confidence, willing to uh, go against the grain. She has that black cat. Traditionally, she has that black cat on her uh, on her lap uh, or by her side. And the Queen of Wands is all about extreme confidence, uh, uh, passion, uh, vitality, uh, doing it my way, doing it with sex appeal and uh, honor because her legs are spread apart. Uh, passion and power. The Queen of Swords coming up after the Queen of Wands is more about, I have mastered this energy. The Queen of Swords has mastered the space of anxiety. She's mastered the space of uh, stealing or being stolen from, being broken hearted. If you look at this, the suit of the air uh, of the swords when it comes to the tarot, a lot of them are quite dark. A lot of it is some very difficult uh, spaces to be in uh, when it comes to those energies. And the Queen of Swords has found herself in all of these dark and confusing and psychologically damning spaces. And she's found herself on her throne through straight psychological grit, mental grit, mental clarity. These There's still uh, these cherries that bloom on this tree here. Birds roam free. But they roam free and these cherries blossom because she knows what is and she knows what isn't. She knows who she is and she knows who she is not. She has mastered the negativity of her own mind. She's mastered the lack of clarity in her own mind. The ways in which she has been so uh, broken, right? Because after the Nine of Swords comes the Ten of Swords and it's betrayal again, right? More difficulty. And... Uh, through the Ten of Swords, it's understanding that, okay, everything painful has already come and gone. She's been there. She's been through it all. And she finds herself on this throne, the, the queen of anti-BS. So in this case, where is it that you've been? It's, it's, it's not a necessarily, oh, you've been getting in your own way. It's about understanding that the things that have happened have happened. You are valid in where it is that you are. You're valid in what it is that you're thinking. Your anxieties are very real. But there is recalibration happening outside of yourself, bigger than yourself. This, again, double confirmation on it being in the divine's hands in terms of what it is that's shifting and changing. And you just have to put yourself in a space that is more positive, more open as this separation happens, as this change happens. The way you have to think about things, the way you're looking at things is is changing and shifting because victory is here. Your ships are coming in. You're going to be stepping out of this area. It's what is already with you. It's what you already have. It's changing the way you see the things that are already in front of you. But again, these are, are literal results. There will be a pattern that stops. There will be a situation that changes multiple situations that change. And, and like I said, most of this feels very financial. So there will be this breakthrough that takes place and you'll be sitting in this victorious state. And it'll put you in a space where you can get control of your mental health, which is a big conversation, especially after going through a 15-year transit. Trauma is on the brain for Capricorn placements. Trauma healing is a big thing going on with you guys having to control what is going on in your mental because you've been tested so much. You've been uh, rooted and uh, not rooted. Rooted is, is good. You've been weighed down so much. And then whatever anxieties you're going through, there's major instability that's in front of you. This is scary. This is stressful. This is damning and damaging, but it's saying that it's ending. This pattern ends. And it ends through this shift happening bigger than you, showing you that now is time where you are victorious. There are wins here. You've made it. You've made it. But you have to let it in. So as some win comes in, open yourself to the fact that it's a win. As some situation changes and shifts in a positive light, you have to allow yourself to let that in. Getting control of your mind and the way you're thinking about things because that chapter is over. It's behind you now. But okay, I'm going to leave it here because this is so long. Um, I love you. Ciao.